Each of these bottles contains 150 milliliters of potassium hydroxide solution, which is about one molar. It also contains 150 milliliters of dextrose solution, dextrose or glucose, which is 0.4 molar. 300 milliliters of each. And there's a magic ingredient in each of them as well. And I'll mention that in a moment. Uh, the solutions were mixed uh, just a few minutes ago. Uh, they can't be mixed long in advance uh, because the reactions that I want to show you will start and then not happen again. So what I did this morning was I put 300 milliliters of potassium hydroxide in one bottle and 300 milliliters of uh, dextrose solution in the other bottle. And when I was ready to mix them, I mixed them completely and then divided it in half. And then I add, added one indicator to this bottle and the indicator I added to the bottle on your right is methylene blue solution which is both a biological stain and a redox indicator. Uh, I added the three or four drops, I'm sorry. Uh, trial and error. It's this blue color I want to get. So I add enough drops of methylene blue to get a detectable blue color. And uh, I add enough of this indigo carmine solution to get this detectable yellow color. And I ask my class with either one of these, uh, I don't tell them anything of what you just heard. This is the way I start with my class. And I hold up this bottle and I ask the students, what color is the liquid in this bottle? And uh, they say colorless. Some of them will say clear. And if they do, I yell at them and I say, clear is not a color. Clear is transparent. It's colorless. It might be clear and colorless, but clear by itself is not a color. So we shake it and it turns blue. And I'll walk away from it for a while so the students look at it and they're wondering why I'm just shaking a bottle. This bottle I'll shake also gently and it turns red and a little harder and it turns green. And I ask them, what color is it? They say red. And then, of course, then it turns green. Come on, can't you tell colors? I'm trying to teach you, I'm going to teach you chemistry, but we've got to get some fundamentals down first. I need you to recognize colors. And don't give me nonsense like, but it was yellow and turned red then green. No. Something is either yellow or red or green. It can't be all three things. Look at it. It's red. And look at it. It's Colorless. Now, it's the indicators that are changing color. Uh, I ask the students to design experiments to find out if there's an effect on how long it takes the color to change if you keep shaking it or if you heat them up or cool them down. And the thing to do is not to sh shake them unnecessarily. Gnomes inside uh, will be consumed and uh, the blue color won't reappear. After a while, the blue does change to yellow, and it stays yellow-blue, yellow-blue, and then it just goes a, an off color. Uh, I added the methylene blue about 10 minutes before you came in. I mixed them a little earlier, and then added the methylene blue about 10 minutes before you came in. Here, I mixed them just before you came in, and then right away, I added some of the indigo carmine. And I added a dropper full of the indigo carmine solution. It's 1% indigo carmine in, in water. So roughly one gram of indigo carmine in 100, in 100 uh, milliliters, 100 grams of water. Uh, I added a, 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 a pipette full. This kind of pipette full. And uh, this one, if you shake it or make it up more than an hour or so before you're going to use it, the colors die. It's much more critical. But I would let the students change the temperature, change the number of shakes, uh, keep records, change the concentrations, keep records, uh, and that can lead into studies of kinetics, redox, 
equilibrium, stoichiometry, all kinds of topics in chemistry, uh, and uh, in, some in physics as well because of the temperature effects and, uh, and the shaking. And uh, they have some fun at the same time. It's beautiful at a kid's birthday party. I've done these for my grandchildren's birthday parties. And uh, all the little kids come running up afterwards. How'd you do it? How'd you do it? You try it. You can do it too. What's inside the bottle? Can't tell you that. Uh, the, the thing you have to be careful with, if you do this in class, as a class experiment, do not use Erlenmeyer flasks or Florence flasks with rubber stoppers. You must use a screw cap because with the high potassium hydroxide concentration, it's very slippery. And shake it once and the stopper will go flying. Or if you shake it by holding the bottle like this, the stopper and the liquid will go flying. So don't. The blue bottle experiment or feeling blue today, or the stoplight reaction, red, yellow, and green. Thank you.